Very interesting the way God works. Turn to Ephesians 6. Why are we in Ephesians 6? Because Ed was in Ephesians 5. And I looked at that and I said, no, I'm not preaching that sermon that I wrote. God's going to take us someplace else. And it turned out to be Ephesians 6. But keep your fingers limber. Finally, Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. He is a schemer. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, not against one another, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may, may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. The spiritual battle. Didn't I just hear something about a battle? We are in a spiritual battle. And there are times that in churches, people have struggles with one another. People look at life differently, look at God differently, the Bible differently, the, the, the way the church is supposed to run differently. They don't like the tie that I wear or the shoes that you wore. I, who knows what they like or don't like. There's no rhyme or reason to most people, right? But it turns out that it's a spiritual battle that drives us. And, it, and it's not that I'm good and you're evil or vice versa. It, it's that we too easily become a tool in the devil's hands. Unintentional. Our intention is to serve God. And yet, it's too easy to be used by the enemy of God and the enemy of, of Jesus, the enemy, enemy of the church. So what do we do about that? Well, we put on the armor of God. We understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And it's not enmity that I have with another person. It's that I want that other person to serve God better. And I want to be able to serve God better myself. And I need you to tell me when I'm being a, a tool in the devil's hands. Uh, by the way, one of my favorite phrases is, if the only tool in your bag is a hammer, everything looks like a nail to you. Yeah. You ever know people like that? I do. I'm afraid when I have too much anger in my heart or in my life that, that maybe that's me. But we have opportunities to grow and to, to use that hammer for God's purposes as opposed to my purposes or whatever it is. But just to understand that every morning when we wake up, we are enjoying the battle. Whether we notice it or not, whether we pay attention or not, whether we never think about the spiritual battle all day long, maybe that means that we're losing the battle by not participating in a meaningful way. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Oh, opportunity. Opportunity to, to, to be light in the world. Opportunity to, to be a witness for Christ because of the stands that we take for him. Now, now again, we're not talking about being the the, the knight in armor that attacks the castle and I, oh boy, a, a, a scene from Monty Python just went through my head here. <laughs> the guy coming in, he kills the bride's father and everything trying to save who he thinks is a damsel in distress in the castle and it's really the guy's son. That's, anyways. Yeah, I think it was Lancelot. Yes, that was going, that's right. Oh my. Wash that out of my mind, please. Now, how did Paul fight this battle? Let's go ahead a chapter to Philippians chapter one. You didn't know there was an Ephesians seven, right? How did Paul, uh, Paul, how did Paul fight the battle? No. Paul fought the battle. Let's go to verse uh, 12. And Paul is in a different situation. He's in chains. He's imprisoned. He's been arrested on trial and brought to Rome and it can't go anywhere. 
Paul was used to being a free man who could go wherever he wanted and he could go wherever God wanted. He could preach the gospel. He could, could impact lives. And you know what? God's still using him because he's still fighting the battle. Now I want you to know, verse 12 here, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. A lot of folks said, hey, what's the worst they can do to me? Throw me in, in the, the jail, put me in chains. Oh, Paul's dealing with that. It's fine. You know, it is true that some preach Christ, verse 15, out of envy and rivalry, those big dopes, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that in no way, uh, that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in this body, it will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Okay, guys, I've been thrown in prison. I'm in chains. Praise God. How many of us for the last 15 months, it's felt like a prison? Yeah? yeah. You know, I, I, I've watched what the camp has done, what Charlie and Melissa have done at every turn, trying to make the best decision at every turn, trying to do ministry in the way that, that the camp was designed and set up for and that God had been using all these years, 40 plus years now at this point. And at every turn, there's a new blockade. You know, Paul knew about that. He tried to go into, what was it, Bithynia? Not now. Why do I do that? Me and technology, we just don't work well together sometimes. Paul could have quit. He could have gone back home. Oh, so I'm not allowed to go here. This door's been closed. This door's been closed. What am I supposed to do now? Hey, Paul, come over here. What? The dream. May have been Luke right after in, in his dream. May have been somebody else. May have been nobody else. Just God's voice. Here's the point. Paul kept working. He kept fighting for the Lord. He kept doing the things that that made him effective as God's servant. It didn't matter if he was in chains. It didn't matter where he could or couldn't go. You know what I think Paul noticed? Number one, he's not going to live forever. So who's going to take over when he leaves? How about this guy Timothy? How about Titus? How about Tychicus? How about Silas? How about John Mark? Yeah. So, Instead of one guy going, and he's a very effective servant, now you got two or three or four or five guys going, right? Isn't that better? The battle's going to be won when you have more people on the front lines. And so Paul makes sure that he instills in people that for us to live is Christ, to die is gain. We look forward to that day that we get to go be with the Lord. For the servant of God, no life is too short. For the person who doesn't know him, no life is long enough. So be the person.
that lives every day for Jesus, fights that battle, shares the message, the good news about Jesus Christ. The battle can be won in our lives, can be won in the lives of many others when we have the right attitude and outlook toward the enemy. Let's stand together. Uh, Mike Rossi, would you have our closing prayer, please? No, that'd be fine. Mike, meet Mike. Mike, meet Mike. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> We're working on that. Well, thanks to Matt. This is the first time that Mike met Mike. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, I was just going to move the page to wherever I wanted. Oh, no, sure. That'd be fine. You know, I kind of enjoyed today's message. You know, talk about don't be a tool of the devil. Uh, amen. The, the times we're going through, the kids are challenged every day, bullied. I enjoyed the story that Ed told us about the generator and ten dollars to tinker with the generator and nine thousand nine hundred and ninety to fix the right location. <laughs> wow. That's that's awesome. That is powerful. Being a technician, I know the difference. Flailing and Easter egg, they call it. <laughs> there's, there's a difference between not getting there and getting there. Amen. So I say all of that to say this. Would you suffer a hundred years for eternity? Oh. I think all of us would say on the surface, yeah, hundred years, eternity, that's awesome. I'll take a hundred years. Well, you're in it right now. You know, maybe it won't have 60 years or 50 years or 40 years or 37 years. Have you secured your eternity with the Lord? Erlene's praying for 20 more. We'll add that to the prayer list. Put it on board. <laughs> Talked about God's standards, God's will, the armor of God. What do we need to do? What is God's will? Those are all good questions. So, with all of that being said, I think you know where I'm going, right, Candace? <laughs> At God's will. What are we supposed to do? How do we secure our eternity? It starts with the two greatest commandments. I'd like to read that scripture. Make sure I get it right, because it's that important. It's in Matthew 22, 36 and 40, but I'm going to read 36 to 39, maybe. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, your soul, and with your entire mind. The second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on the two commandments. That's God's will. For all of us. If you don't know where to start, you need to start there. If you're not doing it, you need to start doing it immediately. If you are doing it, then just keep plugging away because uh, it's not easy. Now, it didn't say what type of neighbor, young, old. It just said all of your neighbors, all of the community. So if you want to change the world, it's time to get up. It's time to come out. It's time to join your church, join the community, Amen. help the camp. You want change in the world and you want it for better. Make it happen. Don't sit on the sidelines. If you feel like you're in prison, get out. If you feel like you're in darkness, come to the light. Amen. You can watch to YouTube. And be confused. And I love YouTube, don't get me wrong. But there's one tube that you should be watching every day. And that's God's tube. Amen. Start reading the Bible again. Get back to the church. Start prayer. Start fellowship. Get around and do something. Help an old neighbor mow their lawn. I know it's crazy talk. But just by an act of kindness, or even a kind word, the domino effect is huge. We never see it. Like you said, we might not see it in our generation. But you can make a difference. You bag us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Lord, we give thanks and praise to you, Father, for the gift of our salvation, the sacrifice of your Son, your love, your mercy. We pray, Father, for Melissa and Charlie, the camp leaders, the kids at camp, the donors, the churches, all the servants. We pray, Father, that the summer will be a blessing to the children. We ask, Father, that you help the staff 
with stamina, with boldness, with joy, peace. Help them to feel the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do your will, Father, not our will. We ask, Father, that you bless everyone here with the Holy Spirit. We ask that in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mike. God bless everyone. God bless.